So what is up YouTube family? Uh, I want to share with you real quick before you watch this long training. It's an exclusive training that I do with my team and I share with them how I sold one policy every day, the things that I focus on, the strategies, and I break down a method that I've never shared before on YouTube. And one of our agents, I think this is one of the best trainings I've ever done. One of our agents took this advice I'm going to share with you um, and she sold six policies that same day. Yeah, six policies of the methods of little dialing strategies i'm going to share with you guys when i was in the trenches dialing every day how i focus on getting one deal a day and ultimately i'm going to share with you how if you focus on just getting one deal a day it'll completely change your business completely change your life um and i want to give you guys the raw footage of my training it's very in-depth don't miss it and wait to the end i share with you guys something i've never shared before love you guys i never made a sale and you guys can learn this skill i think the biggest lesson for all of us is that we can always get better a lot of us, like we think we're all right or like we're getting, but there's always something that we can learn. There's always something that we can do to get better. And I want to share with you real quick what I did. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of my screen here of how I created these duplicatable results for you guys every day that you guys can build yourself. So here's my real tracking sheet. So you guys might think, why you guys do tracking sheets? You all can see my screen, right? We did this since January, the month before February. This is before it was just me and Micah. You guys see here all in the green. So these are the days that I typically worked. So this is, you know, turtle. These are my leads here, 30 leads, 27 leads. Sometimes I eight leads. And then I turn off my lead flow and I would still make sales Two, one, two, three, two, two. This is January of this year. Two sales. Um, this was a day that I didn't make a sale, but I'm going to share with you kind of what happened here. Um, two sales, three sales, two sales, two, one sale. And then the weekends I'd hit my eight to 10 policy goals and you did it. And this was just January. You can see 36 sales, February again, tracking sheet, Month after month, day after day, here's my dials, 140 dials, 120 dials, 140, 81, 65, 55, 12, four sales, two sales. I was off here Tuesday, two sales, four sales, three sales, one sales. And even March, again, all the green. Every day that I worked, I created this consistent system in my sales process, which I'm about to share with you guys with, on how you can create these duplicatable results. You can see my lead cost, my lead, my leads total, 38, two, seven leads, four, 42 leads, 39 leads, 40 leads. 574 leads. We didn't know what we were really doing, but this is why we guys create these. And I want to share with you, like that was, you guys might not recognize me. That's what we did. We created, we did exactly what you did, but we had the leads. We had the systems. This is why we tell you guys, track your numbers, make the phone calls and do the work because you can create um, duplicatable results. And I just want to share with you guys what that was. So I want to give you guys the juice here. I'm going to share with you what, what I did and how I focus on just getting the one sale, like what my day work looked like, um, and how you guys construct this yourself. So the one thing I need is this one sale. Now this might be intense for y'all. Like it might be like a little over the board. You might not think that you're built this way, but I ran, like I needed one sale. I, for me guys, when I got into this business, I gave up everything. I was literally had no money. I had to make this business work and you guys can make this business work. If you're coming in right now and you're struggling financial financially, and you're not happy with where you are, just focus on one sale. Cause if you can make one sale, I'm telling you, this will be the game changing moment in your business. And here's how I did it. So mornings, tactically, mornings were so sacred to me. You guys might be asking like, what did your mornings look like? For me, I protected my mornings, 8.30, 9 o'clock, never was a time I was not hitting the phones. And right now I feel like some of our results, like, you know, could be impacted because we're not taking the importance of mornings. I woke up stressed because it's nine o'clock on Eastern time and people already been up for an hour. You know, I can't be dialing the phone at 10 o'clock, never in these three months, four months, five months that I did this, was I ever dialing after nine o'clock? So for you guys to understand where you're at, it's like, be very, um, be very intentional with your mornings. This is where I made all my sales. The mornings were the best thing that I could ever focus on is 8, 8 30, 9 o'clock. I'm hitting the phones. Second thing, I protected my mornings. I don't know if you guys can do this, but protect your mornings. Your mornings are so important. This is where you're making your sales. You're making that one sale. And what I did is I wouldn't do any client service work. I wouldn't go on walks. I wouldn't go, you know, journaling for a few hours. I wouldn't go out there and, and meditate in my room talking about like, you know, speaking out loud in the mirror. I'm going to make sales today. That's not what I did. And I went 830 came, 930 came and I was making, I was hitting the phones. And I think a lot of times we can fall in the trap of like, you know, let's just kind of just, you know, something came up here. Let's go and do that. But all I focus on is making one sale. And why I protected my mornings is because my goal every day when I got on the phones and my leads were there is I need to make a sale by noon. Okay. So a lot of us are like, all right, when do I need to make a sale? I don't want you guys to write this down. 
make a sale by noon. That was my only goal. Like I had this pressure, this overwhelming feeling. I don't know if it's healthy. Again, this is intense, but I was like, I am not doing anything until I make my sale by noon. Like I was like, dude, I don't care. My girlfriend's calling me. I don't care. My mom's calling me. I can't talk right now. A client needs help. I'll call you at 12. So my mornings were sacred. And I think a lot of times we get like a little distracted. Something will come up at like 10. Client will call you. Hey, can you just chat for a bit? Or, you know, I need to do some service work at 10.30, 9 o'clock. Heck no. I'm doing that at 12. Mr. John, if you need my help, I'm going to put you down at 1 or 12 o'clock. I, in my mind, I got to get my first sale because the first sale means everything to me. So a lot of times we have like these distractions that come our way in the mornings and it throws you off that pedestal. And it's like something else is going to come up. And if you don't protect your mornings, guys, you will have like these tedious tasks. You'll wake up, it's 12 o'clock and you haven't even made like 30 dials. So one thing for you guys is just focus on the mornings, like hit those mornings hard. If I was in your shoes right now, if I was playing against you guys and Micah was, you know, the team captain, I hate to say it, but I'd be up at, you know, I want Eastern time. I'd be calling before this meeting and you guys don't have to do that. It's not like that, but that's how I was built. If I was competing against you guys right now, you sure as hell think 830 my time, I'm calling the phone. I'm getting 30 extra minutes in in the mornings before everyone else. And when I had smart financial leads, that's exactly what I did. At eight o'clock, I was calling people. I was calling, two, I, was, I was making two sales in the morning by 10 o'clock where everyone was just hitting the phones. And it's not just, it's not just, you know, waking up early to be there. But like, I knew if I can give myself that little advantage every day that I'm going to change my life with this business. And you guys can do this as well. Um, second thing that I did um, um, was the mornings were, were, were like the time for me to literally just, just get that done. I knew again, I had to feed my family. I had to make this work. I needed my first sale. So whatever you guys do, whatever distraction comes up in your mind in the morning, think about how can I make my first sale before I do anything? And then it's funny, Josh, you get a sale on your belt in the morning, Cam, you break the ice in the morning. How much better does your day feel? You can unmute, you can tell mm. how, how great does that feel? It's amazing. And if there's a reason behind why the first sale is so important to get that out of the way in the morning, because if you get that out, like you're going to sell different, you have some confidence, you're not stressed, you're not chasing deals, you're not doing any of that. And that's how I rocked. I'm like, I have to get this thing because I, I, I'm not going to pee. I'm dialing the phones. And like, this was intense for me, but that's how I operated. And this is how I literally made a sale every day. And some days you'll see one sale and the next day there were four sales. And the next day there were three sales, but it all came from me just doing that one sale first and then the four would come, okay? Second thing is strategy. I'm gonna guys give you a strategy I've never broke down before. And I'm gonna share with you exactly what I did. Um, first thing is this right here. It's my script. I don't know. Y'all see this. My dog ate it with me. This would go on the plane with me. This would go to the gym in my book bag. Like this is intense. But like if someone called me when I was driving to the gym, I would stop. I would sell them a policy on the, on, on the side of the road and I would have my script with me. And y'all think that's crazy, but that's what I did. Because when, when you have to operate to feed your family, when I have everything, all my chips on the table right now, when your family is relying on you to step up as a man, when your family is, is relying on you to provide for your family, when I told my parents, I'm going to build a business that's going to change their life. And they asked me, did you make a sale today? And I said, no, that was never going to be the case. So that is intense. But this is how I operated. And you guys don't have to run like that, but this is what I did. Um, that script always came with me. And most importantly, guys, the script, there was never a time that I read a different statement off the script and we listen to your calls there's never a different word track on the script like you can see this thing i would just take notes and write through it because i knew this was going to change my life if i could just read and understand the sales process this process is very easy the minute that we think that we know something is different or we're going to try something new because i heard it on instagram and some guy who's selling solar is selling selling this way and we tried to, and that was never me if i made a sale yesterday you sure as heck think I'm going to do the same thing again tomorrow. So I'm going to say, say the same words. I'm going to have the same, same empathy, have the same tonality. I'm going to have the same word tracks. I'm going to hear the same objections. I'm going to handle it the same way because I study that every day to create consistent results. So stick to the script is all I can say. And all I want to just continue to preach to you guys, stick to that script. Never think we are too good to like try something new. The script worked. Y'all made many sales off of it. Just rock it. You ask Andy, how are you making three sales? Andy does not know how to, he, he, I trained him to do final expense and that's all he's doing. He's reading the scripts. And a lot of times we make some sales. We get a little cocky, a little confident. Let's try my own little way. And you just have to have that, like, understand like this thing works. Why fix it? Why, why, why try to make some improvements? Um, follow that script.
third thing is, um, I want to share with you a little printing paper method. I never shared with you guys before. So I'm going to share with you what I did. I would go to my printer. I would grab a stack of like paper like this, um, like a large paste. Like I'd grab like 30 sheets and I would fold it in half and I'd cut it, cut it right down the half. And what I do every presentation that I did is I would put, you know, let's say Roy picks up. I'm like, Hey, Mr. Roy, what's going on? I need a presentation. I'd write his name at the top of the paper. It's a whole piece of paper. This is a sale that I'm looking at. This is Roy's name at the top. This is all I'm focused on is Roy, put Roy's name, his date of birth, and then I would do his presentation and I would take it all on paper at the end of that sale, at the end of the presentation, write down the situations, give me three options, 10,000, 15, 20,000. I circle all three. I'd write the quotes down. Uh, 10,000 is a hundred and you know, $76, 15,000 middle option is $90. Uh, 20,000 is uh, $150. And I, if I sold Roy, what I would do is I'd highlight in, in like Sharpie I'd highlight how much I sold him like the 15,000. And then I put his name here and I'd highlight him. And I had a stack of all my clients to write on me every day. Mr. Roy, I don't care who it is. I had all my stack of my clients here written down with his name and highlight right there. Second thing that I did is that if I didn't sell Mr. Roy, I had this same piece of paper and I put to left me. Roy, daughter's name, Stephanie, um, wants me to call him back. And what I did, guys, is the paper method. I, I would go through all those calls every day when I didn't hit that one deal in the morning. And it's 12 o'clock approaching. I have about 45 minutes, 30 minutes before 12 hits. Guess who I'd call first? I'd call Roy and I'd call Stephanie and I'd call Janice from three days ago. And I'd call, you know, um, Tom from four days ago because I was right there. I was right there. There was some reason that they didn't buy. And I got to figure that out. I got to close this lead out. And the people that said screw off. No, you know, I would literally just shred it up and like there's a clear no. But until I got a clear no from Roy, this is my saving grace. When I came into it. Um, I remember Michael, my first day here in Arizona, I, I had that commitment, make a sale. And I didn't make a sale till six o'clock. And I went through all these pot packets. I didn't have Wi-Fi in my apartment. I went down to the library and I went through six thirty, seven o'clock. I sold the last deals, like last phone calls because of this little yellow paper that I had on my next to me. So this printing paper method is a great way for you guys to save your deals. If you have zero deals right now and it's three o'clock, four o'clock, don't go through your part. No, you can go through your pipelines. Cool. If you don't have any new leads. But go through the people who are just right there on the finish line, who like you just need to check up on them, who've had an appointment. And another thing that I did is I tracked my scheduled appointments. A lot of these people, we have appointments with them last month and we forget about them. When you have them written down in front of your name, you can go back and be like, oh, yeah, Miss Sharon, she had them. She wanted to call Mutual Omaha. Miss Sharon, what's going on? And you just randomly had that. It's so weird. That like literally, if you just do the calls and you don't make any sales one day, but you have these papers next to you, that one of those people are going to say yes today. And you're like, how the heck did I make a deal? Remember when we talked about earlier, like how the heck did I make a deal randomly? It's because you did the work. You remember this person, their problem is still not solved. Give them a call. How I would call these people. I would call them twice on my CRM. If they didn't answer, I'd call them another time on my, on my cell phone. So these appointments are very high value. Treat them as like, Oh my gosh, they're right there. They just, they just, all they have to do is pick up the phone. And sometimes we're like too naive or too nice to these people. Like, oh, they're going to call, they're never going to call you back. The people that you guys sell life insurance to are lazy. They'll never make an action. And I want you guys to get cussed at sometimes. Like people, if you think you're too scared to call them again, because they're going to cuss at you, I promise you they're not going to cuss at you. They're going to thank you. Thank you for calling me. So change that mentality. I used to be so scared at calling someone two times. If I had the stack of a hundred people, like let's say 12 people who I quoted last week, who didn't show up to their appointments and I had them right next to me. I'll call through them once with my dial, my dialer, call them twice, once with my CRM, once with my CRM. And then I literally pick up my cell phone. You guys aren't using your cell phone at all. That's my little fiance there, but you guys aren't using your cell phone at all. Um, what that means is I would, I would call them twice. They don't, they see my CRM. Oh my gosh, this guy's calling. And then, oh my gosh, hello. Who's this? I'm like, Hey, Hey, Miss Sharon, you know, I was just calling you here. Sorry. Um, I know you're busy and I would not treat that cell phone call any different. Just go right into it and they'll pick up your cell phone. So use it as a strategy. Um, that's the paper method that I use. So if you guys are not running those, those names down right there at the top of your, of your, of your, of your paper, and you don't have a list tracking back, Tyler does this well in his text messages sequence. And, but like, don't ever lose sight of those people that are right there. You'll squeeze two to three more extra deals every week. If you just do that, um, that's what I said. Missed appointments. If people miss my appointment, um, I'm treating that very, very important. Like if someone set time on my calendar, guys, your time is valuable. If someone doesn't show up to your appointment, 
you're sure as heck they're going to get three calls from me and they're going to get a text message and they're going to get a call from my cell phone because I set 30 minutes to help you when I could be doing something else. Miss Sharon, why aren't you picking up? So I think a lot of us will like, the, we'll send them a little text, like we'll hit no show and like, oh man, they'll call me back. No, th- you guys got to take that as disheartening. That's disrespectful to you. Miss Sharon, are you okay? I, we had a time here that you wanted me to help your family. Are you all right? Okay, let's go into it. So let me see if I can help you. So I think we, we let people off the phone too easily when they miss your appointments. Um, we kind of let them go. We're like, you know, they, they, they just, you know, we'll just fall into it because we're getting so many more leads. Um, another strategy that's important to me is the mornings when I had to make my sales, when those new leads came in, I worked them. Like I, like the thing is when you pay for leads and you're spending 15 to $20, $30 on a lead, you're going to do whatever you can to get that person on the phone. When I was just by myself, you know, before Micah and I was spending all this money on leads, when that lead came in in the morning, guess what? I'm stopping everything that I'm doing. I'm not calling my old leads. I'm calling that immediate lead because they just fill out this form. And I have a lot of money coming in. Like I have to close this. I this game. I have to speak to this person. So sometimes I think you know, when you have the abundance of lead flow and you're calling, like oh, I'll get to that person. That's not the case. If I have not made my first sale, you best believe if I'm speaking to Mr. Jimmy and Mr. Jimmy's nowhere near ever going to buy from me, he's wasting my time. Hey, Mr. Jimmy, my grandma's calling. I'm hanging up on him in a nice way. But that's how I run. Like I would never let someone waste my time on a phone call talking about his daughter's sister's soccer game when leads are coming in. And I don't want to be disrespectful to my client. Hey, Mr. Jimmy, I got to run. My grandma's really calling me. I got to, I got to, I got to take this. Let me call you back. And I would call, I would call them because these new leads are coming in. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've not made my first deal. I'm telling you guys, if you have new leads in your pipeline every day, I close one of those new leads. If I had new leads in my pipeline, there should be zero reasons why you don't sell one of those in the beginning of the morning. They're hot. They're fresh. They're overnight. They're brand new leads. Close them up. Um, and then for you guys, uh, immediate response to another strategy that I did that's helpful for you. I hawked my, I don't know if you guys do this, but I have two, I had two screens and like those messages were everything to me because I was not getting on the phone when Miss Sharon texts me like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a smoker. You're sure as heck I'm going to respond to her instantly and I'm going to call her. And sometimes these text messages come in. And, you know, we'll, we'll wait on a few minutes, but no, they're engaged. They're right by their phone. We have to nurture that lead. And if I did not make my sale, I'm calling that person three times just as they're important. Um, I have to get to them. Also, lastly for you in the strategy is how I work my new leads. Um, I would call, I would go through my pipeline. So you have new leads, brand new leads that came in. You call them, let's say I have 15 leads. You guys are getting 15, 20 leads, let's say. 20 leads, you call them three times, two times. They don't answer two times and then I call them on my cell phone. They don't answer, I'm gonna call them on my cell phone again because they just fill out this form. I'd move them over to contact two. I'd go through all my leads. I'm making sure I'm getting through all my new leads and then contact two. I don't care if it's 30 minutes ago or 40 minutes ago or three hours ago, I'm calling them again like a new lead. Like if I go through all my leads and no one answers instantly, 30 minutes go by, I'm calling that person again. I'm not going to contact three. I'm not the old people. I am calling that new lead again because they're the freshest. We have to work those leads hard and that's that's how I operated. Um, any questions about that, guys? I called my leads four to six times every day that were brand new. And if I didn't, I had that fallback pipeline. If you guys aren't using that method, please use it. Be organized. Find some time to just write down your presentations, the names, and have those lists of people. I guarantee you, if you ever go a day without making a sale, give yourself one more hour and call that fallback pipeline and you'll make a sale. I guarantee it. Um, the last thing I want to highlight there before the strategy is like, I went crazy, as you guys can see, for my first deal. And it was kind of like crazy, but like, that's what I had and needed to do. And I know my goal, your goal is not to do one deal a day. That's five deals a week. That's terrible. Like that's, you're underperforming. But I can guarantee you guys, the goal is to do your 10 to 12 to 15 every week. But if you just focus on every day, I just need that one deal by noon. You're, you're going to blow your socks off with how many policies you'll sell at the end of the week. You're going to absolutely surprise yourself when you make that deal early in the morning, how many deals you make, your momentum builds, you're, you're just, you're, you're, you're charismatic, you're funny. Josh can say something stupid to a client and not care. I could just, you know, I could say something so dumb to Miss Sharon, but I know that she's going to like it when I wouldn't have said that before because I haven't made my first deal. When you make that first deal, it gives you, it gives you that credibility to literally have an amazing, like, to like, okay, I can do whatever. I made my first deal. I know the floodgates are open and that's how I operated. 
Um, I want to share with you some of the mentality side of things, how I rocked and how, if I was in your guys' position, allow myself to get a deal every day. Um, mentality, this is how I operate. Again, this is intense, but this is how I did it. And this is how I focus on getting one deal a day. I love you guys, but if I was competing against you guys, this is what I would do. Number one, if my name was never, never number one, and we're not here, like if you, we're a competitive team, we, we, this is how we rock. We're here to make each other better. Spencer, I love you, man. But you're right now, you're at the leaderboard and I'm number three. You best believe I'm going to take you out. Like that's how I'd run. Like, it's like you, there's no way I'm not number, I'm getting chills because I remember when I was like literally looking at that, but no one knew my name. I'm like y'all MFers better wait for me to get to the top. Let me learn something. And that's how I operate. And that's how I want you guys. I don't know if you have that competitive like heart inside of you. I can't build that, but that's how I did it. Is like, if I'm not number one, number one, like it's cool. I want someone like you can try to beat me, but you're not going to. I'm sorry, Spencer. If I was dialing next to you, you're not going to beat me. And we're a team here. We operate together. But like that competitive excellence that we talk about here is real. And that's how I got a deal every day. Because I knew if I'm going to see someone that's closing, there's no way in heck I'm not closing a deal that day if they're selling. So that mentality shift of how I ran and how I operated, that competitive excellence, I think sometimes we kind of like, we push things off. Or number two, set goals for ourselves. If you set goals for yourself this week and you're looking at where you are right now and you're not anywhere near it, what are you going to do? For me, my non-negotiable, I don't care where I was. I don't care if I had a wedding to go to on Friday and I'm at four deals, I'm hitting eight policies. And some people might say that, but that's literally what I did. For th three, four months before ever Micah ever met me and I had to figure out health sales, I sold seven days a week. And I think right now, if you guys are struggling, if you guys are not at where you want to be, you have to do more work because the way to learn sales when you're not that good or you're underperforming is just do more work. It's listening to how many dials. Like this is how I'd rock. Cam, let's say, or, or Spencer, you're rocking number one right now. I'm going to go in your CRM right now. I'm going to look at how many dials Spencer did today. This is how I would do it. And I'll look at how many Spencers did, and I'm going to say I'm going to do double that. Now, y'all don't have to do that, but that's how I learned how to learn this skill. I was like, Spencer doing 180 dollars. Cool. He takes a break for about 30, 40 minutes at lunch, go home, kiss his wife. Cool. He has a wife. He's cool. But like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit my goals. I'm going to get ahead of him, and then I can take some, you know, I can then I can spend more time. So that competitive excellence, guys, I want you guys to never forget that side. It will take you further than you ever thought in this business. It did for me. It did for Micah. We wake up every day and we focus on just finding that one deal. Secondly, keeping promises to ourselves, guys. I think this is just personally out of love. I want to share this with you guys because all I care about is keeping promises that I make to myself. I don't care, you know, what my parents think about me now. I don't care if they respect me. I care if I respect myself. When I tell myself I'm going to do eight policies, I'm going to do the eight policies. When I tell myself I'm going to do 250 dials every day, I made sure I did 250 dials. Because guess what? I did, I go one day where, I, you know, I do 227 dials. You know, it's cool. Ah, I'll, I'll clock out early. You know, I'm getting kind of hungry. I'll, I'll go to the gym. I didn't hit my goal. You'll do that again and again and again. And eventually you'll never, you know, you'll never be a man or a woman who actually says what they say they're going to do. Okay. And for me and Micah, we are people and that's changed our life is I'm, if I'm going to do this, if you guys heard that little clip I shared with you, this is why I made it. This business is going to effing change my life. I knew it and I did it. And that's what I believed in. And every day when nobody was watching, I was doing those dials. I was setting those goals and I made sure no matter what I hit those goals. Now you don't have to be extreme. I don't recommend you take Sundays off. You know, you can have a day off, but for me in early on in this business, I had to take every day. Micah worked every day. And just because like we had no way, we had no way to, to make this win unless we hit the goals that we set ourselves up for. Um, Last thing I want to share with you, that's kind of the mentality. That's kind of the frameworks, the committed excellence that we had. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to be a closer, okay? What that meant for me, guys, in this industry, if you're, you know, Jeff, Spencer, Tyler, Ken, Sam, my goal was if I spoke to Miss Betty, I wanted Miss Betty to know that I was the best insurance agent that she will ever speak to on planet Earth. And I really meant that. How did I carry myself when I spoke to her? how much over empathy and how much love before I hung up on the hung up that lady, I made that lady feel like I am never going to look anywhere else. I don't care if I spent another 30 minutes with her. I have to solidify that sale. Like she is not going anywhere else. 
A lot of times we'll make a sale. Cool beans, got my sale. Cool, let's go on to the next one. And we rock. Rather than I need this lady, Miss Betty, to never, ever, ever click on another ad, to never, ever, ever talk about you know another life insurance agent, to literally feel disrespected and call me Tanya Hunter. She calls me every time an agent calls in her house. She called me once and a client was in her house, American Income Life agent in her house saying, can you speak to this guy, get him out of my house. And this is how I rock. It's like, I have these clients, they're not going anywhere else. I'm going to share with them so much love. I'm going to share with them so much care. I'm going to make them laugh. I'm going to make them like, you know, have the best day of their life. And I'm going to change their life with this product. How many times do you guys, I would go into restaurants and mean, man, it's just like, cool. I'm just treated like another client, like another one. But that one special waiter that would spend some time there sitting down, she'd come down to a meal a little bit at your table. How are you guys doing? And ask about your day. And it's weird. You show up back to that restaurant and you're looking for that waiter. And that's what we wanted to do. And that was my framework in the life insurance business. That if I loved on anybody that spoke to, if I thought I could get anybody on the phone, if I had leads, I could close you and I could eventually go back to be that person who could feed their family. I could learn the skills, the habits, the love and treat that client. Because guess what? Miss Betty, you know, Miss Mr. Roy, Kathleen, let's see our uh, Willow Fillers, Patricia Martinez, Sheila, Anthony Oliver, Charles Craycraft. They pay our bills, guys. They feed your family. I get chills about it because sometimes we treat these people like dirt and like not like dirt, but we treat them as like, oh, you know, it's another client. But they literally spend their little income every week, every month to allow me to have clothes, allow me to pay my rent. And that's how I thought about this. Imagine how amazing if I made them feel if I just told them how grateful I am for them, that I will never let them down, that I will love you forever, that I will take care of you forever. And with every client that I did, those stacks and stacks of papers that I had mounting up with highlights of the name and the highlights of a close, those people allowed me to feed my family and to change my life. And it all comes from these little small things. And I think sometimes we forget about how important those people are and we neglect their, pur their purpose. But that is exactly how I sold one policy per day, which turned into 12 to 15 per week. How that one policy that I needed every morning change my life, allow me to build this business, allow me to change hopefully your guys' life. And it came down to just doing that stuff. Um, that's what I wanted to build out for you guys. And that belief that you have in yourself, um, it comes from you. I can't, like, I, I don't want this to, like, it's, I feel like I motivated you, and you, but like, I want you guys to know, like, you have to do it. It's cool that I say this stuff, but if it doesn't change your behavior, none of this matters. If I say this stuff, you know, make a papers list, highlight it, call them. The leads come in, you let them move them over to pipeline too. You don't call them again. You treat these leads as that they're not important or you treat Betty like not important. If that doesn't, if that doesn't happen today, or you don't focus on, I need to make my morning sacred. I need to make sure that I'm getting my dials by 12, my, by my, my, by noon, then it doesn't matter. This was a waste of my breath. This was a waste of all your time until your guys' behavior shift. And that's what I can tell you. Can, I, can, I can have some conviction and tell you guys this works, but I want you guys to see it for yourself. That's exactly what I did. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you guys today. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't have some sales metrics to tell, hey, to have Micah connect with me and Micah change my business and Micah to be the smartest guy I ever met. I wouldn't have had that unless I knew how to sell. And that all came from these processes and things that I did. So um, that's how I did it. If you guys have any questions about those, oh, those like those processes, I'd love to run that through you. I don't want to rant, but um, if you have one thing around your desk is just make one sale. Like this, this one sale I'm telling you will change your life. It'll allow you to learn how to master sales. That one sale will teach you how to eventually be so good that every day you make sales and one day you can teach another person to do that. And then you can teach another person to do that. You can become a leader inside of a company. If you, all you have to do is make one sale. Because again, it's not one sale because one is five or six or seven if you worked every day. That one sale has so much weight throughout your week, has so much weight throughout the month and have so much weight for you here inside of our company that I want you guys to focus on. How can I make every day just one sale? And that's all I want you guys to focus on. That's, uh, that's enough of my TED talk. That's how I did it.